Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with the weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Polen Number no. 1 Mini. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. And again, my sincere apologies for the nightmare with the upload last week. I don't know what was going on. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't end up happening this week. All right, so let's get started with the very first question, shall we? From Anna Kim. With all the rumors regarding no more Louis Vuitton canvas bags, which three of your canvas pieces would you buy right now if you didn't already have them? Um, all right, so I've kind of streamlined my uh, Louis Vuitton uh, collection for handbags, and I am a creature of habit, so if something ends up working out for me, I end up buying it in multiples, as many of you know. Uh, but if I had to choose three bags, right? Three bags, it would be the Neverfull MM in the monogram canvas, it would be the classic Speedy 30 and the Damien Azur and the Pochette Matisse, absolutely. Um, and I would pick the, the Monogram Neverfull just because it's the best of both. I have that beautiful, uh, that beautiful leather that ends up um, you know, oxidizing as time goes by and also because the print itself is a little bit more carefree. Um, I love the Speedy 30 Classic in the Damien Azur, especially for spring and summer. It's one of my all-time favorite bags. And the Pochette Matisse just because it has so much versatility and I find it to be very, very comfortable. However, if it was a mixture between handbags and small leather goods. The handbag, I would still end up going for the Neverfull MM and the Monogram Canvas, uh, but I would switch out the other two bags for two small leather goods. The first one being the six ring key holder in the Monogram Canvas. You guys know that's like my ride or die item. Uh, and the other one would be the Mini Pouchette. I don't know if I'd go for the Damien Ben, probably, um, just because I'm a sucker for that red interior, but I also like the Monogram. But regardless, those would be the two small leather goods and the handbag if it was a mixture of both. I would love, love, love to know what three items you would pick um, if you didn't already have them that you would end up going for. Whether you want to tell me just the handbags or whether you want to mix it in with small leather goods. Either way, let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question. Hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Gretchel Zamora. After having your Givenchy Antigona in size small for a while now, do you still love it as much as before? Or would you reconsider and purchase it in the size mini? since crossbody bags are so practical. I've been wanting that bag for several years. I can't seem to decide which size would work best for me. Figured maybe you could break down the mini and the size small if possible. Um, oh right, so we have a little bit more eye candy. Here is the Givenchy Antigona and the size small and the black pebble leather. And do I still love it as much as before? Absolutely I do. I think that this bag is fabulous. And uh, would I reconsider and go for the mini instead of the small? I would still end up choosing the small. I think that this bag ends up working out perfectly for my lifestyle. However, there are so many aspects aspects about the mini that I appreciate. Like you said, it is crossbody. It makes it so much more practical. It makes it so much more convenient. And the fact that you can go hands-free is such a game changer whenever it comes to handbags. So I love that detail. And also the strap, the fact that it is adjustable. You're not, you know, you're not stuck with a one size fits all type of strap. You can make it a little bit shorter. You can make it a little bit longer depending upon your body frame or however you want to rock it. I think that it's awesome that it comes with that. And even though it is small, it still ends up packing a punch, you know, just like with any other small handbag. They're very, very deceiving because some people think that you can only carry like one or two items, but no, you can end up fitting uh, quite a bit in there. The only thing that was a turnoff uh, for me when it came to the mini, even though I appreciate all those details, was the fact that I found the opening to be a little too restricting. Whenever I try to put my items inside or whenever I try to take them out, I felt that they'd end up getting caught. And uh, for me, when it comes to a handbag, I wanna be able to get in and out of it with ease. I don't wanna necessarily fuss with the opening. So that's the only thing that kind of uh, drove me crazy. But other than that, I think it is an awesome, awesome bag. So even though I do love all those details that the mini has to offer, uh, I still end up going for the small because it ends up working out the best for my lifestyle as I mentioned previously just because I really like the shape of it I like the fact that I can carry a lot more with me um, it can get heavy at times especially when I end up carrying everything and the kitchen sink uh, but this strap right here I very very rarely use it on my shoulder I think I've used it on my shoulder maybe I don't know four or five times uh, just because I needed to be hands-free at that moment but whenever I don't need to be hands-free I either hand carry it or I put it on the crook of my arm. So this is strictly for decorative purposes. 
You know, I hate to say that, and I know some people might disagree with me, but that's just the way that I see this bag. I like the way that this looks when it's hanging down below. I don't like the way that it feels whenever I have it on my shoulder. It's not the most comfortable. It's not like crazy, crazy comfortable. It's not like super uncomfortable either, but um, it's, not, it's not a bag that I choose to use on my shoulder. I choose to use it as a hand carry on the crook of my arm just because I really like the silhouette that it has. But if you are looking for a versatile bag, if you are looking for something that gives you a lot more play, especially for the price point, I would definitely recommend going for the mini over the small, um, unless you're okay with just using a hand carry bag and having the option of using it on your shoulder, then I think that this one would be great. But both of them are beautiful, it's just a matter of personal preference. So hopefully that was able to help. Next question from Juliana Coronado. I just ordered my second one, which is a Speedy 30 Bandolier World Tour with the black handles and the beautiful red interior. I'm kind of nervous because it's a customized bag. I know that you had problems before with monogramming your pochette and they returned it for you because of issues. I want it to be perfect since I'm ordering and it's taking up to eight weeks, but if you were ordering a customized bag, what are things that would cause concern as soon as you receive it? This is an awesome question and congratulations on your second Speedy Bandolier World Tour. That is amazing. Um, and I know exactly where you're coming from uh, whenever it comes to any customized item, whether it's a handbag or a small leather good, you know, the fact that they're a little bit more money and the fact that you have to wait to get them, um, you wanna make sure that they're taking, um, that they're taking their time on creating your piece and that way you don't have any inconsistencies, right? I'm gonna tell you guys what I look for when it comes to handbags in general, whether that's a handbag from the boutique or whether it's a customized piece. Uh, but I like to take a look at the stitching just to make sure that there's no loose threads anywhere throughout the, the bag or the small of the good. I also like to take a look at the varnish uh, just to make sure that there's no uh, chunks missing. And if it's a flat bag, I especially like to pay attention to wherever it closes because if the varnish is a little too thin, um, there's potential that it might end up cracking and then it might end up getting into the canvas a little bit quicker. So I always like to take a look at the varnish and um, I like to pay special attention to whatever uh, whatever place was customized, whether that's a patch or whether it's a mon monogram piece or whatever the case may be. I like to look it over with like a fine tooth comb uh, to see if there's any inconsistencies. And what happened with my mini pochette is that the stripes on the backside were a little bit sloppy and uh, they also didn't go to where they should have gone. You know, so um, it was a little too, I feel like it was a little bit of a rush job when I when I took a look at it so I was really bummed out um, but those are some of the things that I look for so if I was to get a customized piece I would look over the stitching I would look over the varnish I would look over um, you know the stripes or the monogram or whatever it was just to make sure that there's no inconsistencies or anything that might potentially end up causing it to wear quicker than the way that it should you know and I know everyone will see this differently some people might think that I'm making it such a big deal um, I don't see it that way because as I said before when it comes to a customized piece the fact that you're paying more money for it and the fact that you are waiting for the item as well and they set the timer of up to eight weeks um, you know I expect it to have a little bit more um, I expect it to have a little bit more care you know what I mean so I don't know if that helps or not but those are just some things that I would look for uh, whenever it comes to a customized bag but once again congratulations next question from gifted gal not a handbag question I have a lip gloss question since you are a lipstick lip gloss junkie I absolutely love this uh, I'm I'm starting to add more lip glosses to my makeup stash, but how do you avoid the excess from spilling out after multiple uses where the gloss gets on the wand and when you decide to close the container, it spills a little outside? I'm afraid to put them in my luxury bags because of this reason. I know exactly what you're talking about and it drives me up the wall when that happens, especially when it's a gloss that I really like the formula or I really like the color. Um, but usually what I end up doing is I end up putting those lip glosses inside of small leather goods. Um, I always like to have like a pouch within a pouch, uh, but those small leather goods, I prefer to go for the ones that have that wipeable interior, kind of like the Toiletry 19, the Toiletry 15 or a cosmetic pouch, just because if you do get that extra it makes it a little bit easier to be able to wipe it off. Um, there have been times that I've gotten the excess on my mini pochette because sometimes I do use that as a cosmetics case and that's a nightmare to clean up just because it does have that beautiful fabric lining. Um, so I've tried to kind of stay away from that. The Chanel cosmetic cases, I love them as well, but they're not as easy to clean um, any residue that you get from your makeup. Other times I find myself constantly cleaning the container. I am literally wasting product just because it ends up going on a napkin or somewhere else. And other times I completely avoid using the gloss or the lipstick in my handbags like the plague. I'll put it in my jacket, I'll put it in my pocket, I'll leave it in my car, somewhere where it doesn't have any contact with my handbag 
bag just because I can't say no to the formula, you know what I mean? <laughs> So I really don't have a good system. So I turn to you guys. What do you guys do when that happens? Because if you can help me out, let me know because I <laughs> I am I have the worst time with those lip glosses, you know, and I'm just like I can't I can't say no to them. I can't say no to them. I have to I have to use them type of thing. <laughs> so again, if you guys have any advice for us, uh, for myself and for Gifted Gal, let us know in the comment section down below. So unfortunately, I didn't have the best answer for you, but hopefully we get some awesome, awesome feedback. Next question from Swellen Walters. I was wondering if you still have your Louis Vuitton Pouchette Voyage. I'm trying to decide between that and the Toiletry 26. Can you give the pros and cons of each? Uh, yes, and so we have a little bit of eye candy. Here is the Louis Vuitton Pochette Voyage in the Monogram Eclipse. Unfortunately, I no longer have my toiletry pouch 26 and the Tahitian Demi Azure to give you guys a little bit more eye candy. Um, but as far as the pros on the Pochette Voyage, for me, number one, the print. I am absolutely head over heels in love with this print. You guys know that. Um, I also like the fact that this has the color treated leather, so it makes it a little bit more carefree. And I also appreciate the fact that this one does come with um, the built-in credit card slots. Uh, there we go. So I do like that. And you also have another little slip pocket there. So I think that's great. They're also very comfortable and very easy to use um, as a little clutch, which is how I use it. So I do like that aspect of it. Um, the biggest con that I would have to say for this is that if you end up using it as a toiletry or even in the event that you do use it as a clutch and if you do get any type of makeup on it, uh, since this does have the gorgeous fabric lining and being able to clean that up is not the funnest thing to do And as far as the toiletry pouch 26 the biggest pro in my opinion hands down is that wipeable interior Because if you decide to use it as a toiletry case or whether you decide to use it as a clutch It makes it that much easier to be able to clean off any residue any makeup residue that you get inside of the lining So it makes it a lot more carefree in that sense. So I do appreciate that aspect of it um, Now as far as the cons actually with both of them just the silhouette that it has there's only so much space that you have to the point where after that you end up having to put items on top of each other so if you end up having to get to something down here and you have other items up here you have to kind of move them around or take those out in order to get to it so uh, sometimes I find it to be a little bit fussy but as far as a dedicated con when it comes to the toiletry pouch 26 I really can't think of one uh, the main reason why I ended up getting rid of that one and not getting rid of this one was because I really like the fact that this one does come with a built-in um, credit card slots because 99% of the time I end up using this as a clutch and it really allowed me to maximize my space by not having to carry an extra wallet or a card holder or anything like that. So I, I, um, I ended up kind of going for this one a lot more often than I would go for the toiletry pouch 26. You know, like I said, it was the second time that I had gotten it and uh, I think that it is a beautiful, beautiful small leather good and every time I see it, I feel like my heart beats a little bit faster, but just knowing for me and my personal lifestyle, I end up... Uh, gravitating more towards this guy than the other one. But I think both of them are beautiful and hopefully this was able to help. Next question from Frederick Thomas. Would you consider a camera bag a trendy or a classic piece? Just in black. Currently deciding between the Prada Diagram camera bag or the Saint Laurent Lou camera bag. Um, oh, right. Um, so do I consider a camera bag a classic or a trendy piece? I tend to consider it more of a classic in a way just because I feel like there's so much history attached to it. You know, there's a lot of development that went into the design of the camera bags that we know and love today because back in the 70s, they looked a completely different way and we've kind of tweaked them. We've kind of um, done this, that and the other. So that way they're a little bit more user friendly and a little bit more universal. So I do appreciate that aspect of it. Um, I tend to consider them more of um, so even though they are classic, they are also trendy. So I'm just gonna go with calling it a classic roller coaster, all right? So it's kind of a cop out, I know. But it's a classic roller coaster because it goes in waves. It goes in waves of popularity. You know, for like three years, it'll be super, super popular, and then it'll start to kind of dip down a little bit, and then five years later, it kind of goes back up in popularity. So it's kind of a trend, but not really, because sometimes I feel like trends, um, 
they they fizzle out, they die down. They had their five minutes of fame, but other classic trendy bags still continue to come back over and over and over as the years uh, as the years go by. So that's why that's why I'm kind of going with a cop out of a classic roller coaster, if you will. Uh, but yeah, I think that they're great. But as far as between the Prada and the Saint Laurent Lou camera bag, both of them are beautiful. I tend to lean more towards the Saint Laurent just because I really appreciate the fact that it has a little bit more of a simple design detail to it because the Prada one has um, it has uh, you know like the chevron going this way and then it has the other um, the other details going the other way so sometimes I find it to be a little too busy and I just end up preferring the Saint Laurent because you do have that beautiful chevron detail to it that adds um, a little bit more simplicity to it so I don't know if that helps or not you know I don't know <laughs> if uh, that was okay for me to cop out but it is trendy it is classic it's just one of those things that continues to come back year after or not year after year but time and time again and when it does come back, it comes back with a bang and it is super, super popular, but not to the point where it completely fizzles out and then we don't hear, um, we don't hear about camera bags ever again. So fantastic question. Hopefully that was able to help. Next question from Joyce C. My husband and I are about to buy our first house and I know that once we make the biggest purchase of our lives to date, I'll be on Ban Island for the foreseeable future. I've got my eye on three bags and I want to get just one before I drag myself onto the island. The Celine Nano belt bag in black, the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse and Monogram, or the small Chanel Classic Flap and Caviar with gold hardware. I already have black Classic Flaps in both the medium large and the jumbo in silver hardware and three black rectangular minis, two with light gold hardware and one with dark silver hardware. I love the Pouchette Matisse, but it's so hard to find. And that belt bag is just gorgeous. What would you recommend? What are your thoughts on the Nano belt bag? Um, all right, so first and foremost, major, major congratulations on your soon-to-be house. That is awesome. Um, and you are deciding between the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse in the monogram canvas, the Chanel small classic flap in the black caviar with the gold hardware, and the Celine Nano belt bag in black, right? <laughs> Hopefully I got that correct. Um, I think all three of these bags are beautiful. Um, okay, so... If it was me, I personally wouldn't end up going for the small classic flap. I think it's beautiful, as I said before, but you already have the medium large, the jumbo, you have three minis. Um, and I know you don't have one that has the gold hardware, um, especially because we've talked about before that the gold and the silver hardware, they're just worlds apart, but still you already have uh, a black caviar leather bag. So that's the one that I wouldn't necessarily go towards. Um, for me, it would be between the Matisse and the Celine belt bag. And kind of like what you said, the, the Matisse is so hard to find. Um, you know, it's getting even harder and harder to find. And even if they do end up discontinuing it, I know that that was kind of uh, some talk that was going around. If they do end up discontinuing it, you'll be able to find it only on the pre-love market. And on the pre-love market, I think that the prices are going to go through the roof. So that's just something to take into consideration. Um, now, when it comes to the Celine Nano belt bag, I love this bag. I didn't, I wasn't always the craziest about it before. Um, I kind of, like I saw it, I was like, oh, okay, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes I thought that the little detail that it has for the belt was a little too busy, but the more and more I see this bag, I got the chance to actually play around with it and it is beautiful. I love the silhouette. I love the fact that you have a little bit more organization to the bag, you know what I mean? And it has, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it has the beautiful microfiber lining and it's also not as fussy as I, as I thought it was to open it up. For some reason or another, I thought that the like the little strings or the belt itself was how you would go inside of the bag. But no, I was so wrong because it does have the, uh, the snap button closure to it. So it kind of has a little bit of a flap to it. Um, but I don't know, I really, I really, really like the Celine uh, Nano uh, belt bag, but it's all a matter of personal preference. Um, I think that if you want to go for a silhouette variety, I would end up going for the belt bag or for the Matisse. Um, but like I said before, with the Pichette Matisse, it's getting so much harder to find. But if you want to have a bag now and be able to enjoy it, then I think by going for the Celine uh, Nano belt bag might be um, a great way to go. But like I said, it's all a matter of personal preference. It's all a matter of what it is that you want to add to your collection. So once again, congratulations on your new house. I'm so excited for you and uh, let us know which one you decide to go for. But good luck and fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Christine Albert. I am between the Chanel Wallet on Chain and the Louis Vuitton Pouchette Matisse. I know they are different bags but almost the same price point. 
I want something for everyday use. I don't have a lot of bags and I won't rotate them much. Um, all right, and so we have a little bit more eye candy. Here is the Chanel wallet on chain and the black caviar leather with the gold hardware and the Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse and the monogram canvas. Both of these bags are fantastic. Um, now, when it comes to an everyday bag, it's all a matter of what it is that you carry with you on the daily. For example, if you end up going for larger handbags, if you end up carrying a little bit more with you, um, then I think that the Pochette Matisse might be the best way to go just because you have a lot more space. The fact that you have the compartments makes it a little bit easier to be able to, uh, to put your items inside. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the Chanel Wallet on Chain. This is by far one of the best purchases I have ever made from the fashion house. However, there's only really so much that you can end up fitting in here. And sure, it does have the built-in credit card slot, so it makes it a little bit easier that way you don't have to carry a wallet with you, and you can end up maximizing your space a little bit more by, um, by carrying uh, other items inside instead of that wallet. So I think it's great. But still, there's only so much that you can fit in here. So if you end up carrying just the bare essentials on the daily, then I think that this would be a great option. Um, another thing that I'd have to point out is that when it comes to the straps of these bags, this one, you can play around with it a little bit more. You can kind of crisscross it inside to make it shorter. You can also put the chain inside to make it look like a clutch. So it is versatile, but if you're looking for something a little bit bigger and something that has an adjustable strap, then the Pochette Matisse, again, would be the way to go. Uh, because that way you can either take off the strap completely and use it like a little mini briefcase or you can use it as a crossbody bag, as a shoulder bag. I think that this one has a lot more play if you end up carrying a little bit more with you versus this one. But if you find yourself only carrying a few items um, every day and you don't really need a whole lot of space, um, then I personally like uh, the Chanel Wallet on Chain. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I think this is an incredible small leather good. Um, you know, and it's been with me. For, it's been with me for a while now. And this one, it does have uh, the uh, the untreated leather, so that way, if you live somewhere where it rains a lot or it snows, uh, then you might end up getting water stains on here. Uh, if you do end up going for the wallet on chain, I would recommend going for the caviar for an everyday. Not that the lambskin, not that you can't use a lambskin every day because it's not as delicate as people make it out to be. Uh, but just in case, because with the caviar leather, you can use in virtually any type of weather, no problem. So um, those are kind of like the pros and cons of each. Like I said, I think both of them are great and it's all a matter of what it is that you carry with you on the daily. And uh, good luck deciding and hopefully that was able to help. And the last question from Jamie Nave, hopefully I said that correctly. I'm wondering where you keep the bag that you're actively using. I have a hook by my door where I usually hang my current bag and jacket, but I'm worried that I'm putting too much strain on the canvas of my Louis Vuitton bags where the strap meets the bag, especially when they are quite filled. Do you set your current bag on the table, on the floor, or hang it from a hook? Uh, all right, so the bag that I'm uh, currently using, 99% of the time it's in this room and it's either on the stool that I'm sitting on or it's on the chair that I often use for my Instagram pictures. It's on one of those, It's in one of those two places. Um, personally, I prefer to have it somewhere where it can just rest and I'm not necessarily causing any strain on the handles, on the grommets, or anything like that because once upon a time, I had this beautiful, beautiful vintage coat rack. Um, I mean, it was gorgeous. And I decided to put it in the corner of my room and I decided to put all of my handbags on there, whether it was the one that I was using or the ones that I was just leaving there just to store. Um, I mean, it looked pretty good. You know, it was kind of cluttered, but I really liked the overall, <laughs> the overall look of it. But I noticed that whenever I take the handbag off of it, when I'd go to use it, the handles would always be really, really wonky and it would start to wear in a completely different direction than how it was supposed to wear. So I got super paranoid and I ended up getting rid of that coat rack as beautiful as it was and I decided to just end up uh, putting my handbags on, sur on a surface where they can just end up sitting there, namely my shelves. Uh, so that ended up working out the best, especially because um, I end up uh, stuffing my bags, uh, sometimes overstuffing them with the bags that I'm currently using, and it was definitely causing a little stu a little too much strain uh, for for the handles than I would have liked to see. So I know some people have um, have no problem hanging their current bags on a hook, and they've had great success, and I think that's awesome. But just my own paranoia <laughs> got to me. So I like to have it on a flat surface where it could just sit there and be pretty type of thing. Uh, sometimes I'll end up putting it on the table, but either way, it has to be somewhere where um, it won't cause any strain or any stress on the leather or canvas or anything like that. Um, I really try my hardest to avoid putting my handbags on the floor just because I think it's bad juju, <laughs> all right? I know some people think that's ridiculous, but I really do believe that it's bad luck to, to do that. So I try my hardest not to do that. Um, but yeah, 
So just being able to put it on a shelf, on a table or somewhere where it could just sit there and not have to worry about how it's going to affect how it wears over time. Um, that's personally what ends up working out for me, but everyone is different. Uh, so fantastic question. Hopefully that was able to help. Uh, all right, you guys. So that does it for Mix Monday q and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Um, now for this week's lineup, I am so excited because we have our first dedicated handbag of the week video for Wednesday. Oh my goodness. I was kind of nervous because I didn't know how um, how you guys would react to, to me potentially wanting to make it into a series. Um, you know, and the fact that a lot of you were like, yes, 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 go for it. You know, especially because it's not going to be 10 or 15 minutes, three to four minutes tops. Being able to have eye candy in the middle of the week, I was like, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they're all for this idea because I think it would be fabulous. So I'm so excited. So thank you guys so, so much for uh, for the encouragement. Um, and as far as the third video, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. It might be up Friday. Um, I think it'll be up Friday, but um, I haven't decided on what exactly that's going to be. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.